I'm going to pitch you guys. I hope you guys, you guys get to pretend to be Frontier. And uh, you tell me if this pitch is any good or not. Elite Dark Star, the campaign. So here's the idea. I think that Frontier should take the existing assets and all of the stuff that they have set up for Frontier. They have already, you know, the flight model, the physics, the locations, the mechanisms, uh, all of the different modules for the ships, all of these things, which are great. A lot of times people have a hard time joining the game Elite Dangerous. They say that it has a crazy high skill wall that they don't get past. A lot of people say, ah, I tried that game. It was too crazy, too difficult. I don't understand what was going on. It didn't seem like it had a story. It was blah, 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 blah. And then they quit because it's either too hard or they don't get the story. They don't get the concept that Frontier is going with here where they have a sort of, you're not the prince who's running to save the princess from the castle. You're just a dude. You're just It's Firefly. You're just Mal Reynolds. You're just another guy or gal out there in the galaxy trying to handle your shit. So the idea here is I think Frontier should take their existing assets that they already have, take their existing game engine and all of the stuff that already does all of the things, and they should make a separate game called Elite, Elite Dark Star. I just came up with that name. You can come up with a better name. That's fine, whatever. But the concept is... They put in a single player story campaign that uses the assets of Elite Dangerous, that uses the multiplayer stuff, but also gives you a really sort of good, dedicated, long form tutorial where it's, you know, you get a game where they say they take all of the existing assets, they're not adding a bunch of new shit, but they take a couple of developers and they turn those assets, they turn that stuff into a very specific set of like, here's 30 missions, 40 missions, and a little story to go with it. Take some voice actors, put in a couple of uh, animators that do that stuff that they showed us with Odyssey, where it's like, you know, the bartender guy, or whatever. You put in some mission briefings where you get, you know, some guy that's like Michael Ironside from, uh, what was that bug movie? Uh, the, Starship, Starship Troopers. Troopers. Yes. You get yourself a Michael Ironside or you get yourself a tough as nails chick who's like, you know, the big badass boss or whatever. And, you know, you get your old grizzled veteran dude and chick, or whatever, and they give you these missions and you go and do the mission. And during the mission, <clears throat> they have sort of an extended tutorial of like, here's your landing gear. Here's your this. Here's how this works. Here's how that works. Here's how. You know, something works and 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 even to the extended like stuff of like flight assist off, like you do a combat, whatever. And and they're like, hey, kid, listen to me when when they fly behind you, hit flight assist off for a moment. Uh, it'll make you be able to turn way quicker. And then you flip around and then you hit flight assist back on and you can lock onto them for whatever. You know, it's just some stuff that explains in detail some of the concepts, some of the more advanced concepts of Elite Dangerous with a little paint by number storyline where it's like go do one of these missions go do a scan mission go do a you know get out in your srv mission go do a go to a guardian side go to a this go they give you a series of missions all pretty much using again existing assets the only thing that you're adding new here is sort of some story mode bullshit of you know, a uh, 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 a boss or a, a coworker that it's like, you know, oh, there's this hotshot pilot and he's too, you know, whatever. He's, you're Maverick and he's Iceman or vice versa, whatever the fuck. They put in a little story, but use all of the existing assets and really break down, do an extended tutorial that's built into the stuff. Then you go ahead and add in sort of a, uh, how do I say this? You have the ability, so you have a single player campaign mode of the game. Now you have the ability to, in the future, if you want to continue to tell the story, you can put in more stuff, more, you know, single player narrative offline mode, whatever you want to call it, version of the story. But when you get to the end of the first campaign, let's say it's, you know, 50 missions and it is... I don't know, it takes the average player, you know, 300 hours or 400 hours. Some of these missions might be like, 
okay, you got to go out to a Guardian site and and bring back this thing for Ram Ta. And, you know, okay, so you're talking about, a you know, a couple hours to get there. You've never been there before. You're doing a lot of jumps. You get there. It, you can dumb it down on the, you know, um, they you don't buy ships. You you get assigned a ship for the mission. You know you don't buy the modules and engineer it. You 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 get assigned the the ship with the you know like they just give you like you know level five engineered modules or whatever. They just you know whatever because it's not yours. It's just a loner. But you can do hundreds of hours of sort of mission playthrough that has a much more gradual and sort of handhold process of tutorializing the whole thing mixed with some intro story to get you to know about Inra, to know about Thargoids, to know about Guardians, to know about Aegis, to know about the club, to know about the Dark Wheel, to know about the power play people and what why that's important and to know like just to know stuff about some of the lore of the game to get people sort of started on the idea of you know what is repairing a station you do an operation ida type mission you do this mission you do that mission and then at the end of this uh granted it's a several hundred you know a couple hundred hour or 80 hour or whatever process but it's just again using all of the pre-existing assets at the end of it you know, then you get a thing saying, okay, now you're ready to graduate to the next level. You're ready to play Elite Dangerous, which is the full on, you know, game. But when you go to play the game for the first time, you're already going to know how to work your landing gear. You're going to understand how what flight assist off is. You're going to understand how to docking request. You're going to understand combat and and your 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 setting your weapon groups and 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 your module priorities and all of these things you will know how to do it so i think the idea the concept is you put a five dollar ten dollar game on steam and the epic store and the consoles and everywhere you can find it as the ultimate training wheels and then at the end of it you let people jump into elite, but now you have, I think, a much higher retention rate because these people know about the story. They know about the basics and all how to work the stuff. You're not going to get overly frustrated because you keep crashing when you're trying to, you know, come in for a landing or whatever. So, yes. And for those of you who are paying attention, who play uh, Star Citizen, yeah, I'm talking about Squadron 42, the Elite version. Duh. But, like, it's a good idea, and it would work. All right. Tweet? Wolf Dragon? Who wants to hop in first here and start commenting or go with it, whatever? I'll jump in real quick here. I, I do like this idea, and, and I think there's a couple of things they could do. Now, like you said, if they're using existing uh, 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 of designs that are in the game already... So there's not a lot of development effort really needed. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then if they add a good story to it, then you'd even have somebody like me who is a huge Mass Effect fan, but I love my Elite Dangerous almost as much, if not as much. I'd probably play it just, just to get that story, just to get that feel of, uh, of belonging in the universe and then give me something different to do. And then, as you said, if they added, they could, they could even down the line after Odyssey's done and they're on a development break, they could take that mode, that model, and they could develop DLC for it and they could mm -hmm. monetize that. So they could really work with something like that and make money and help the player base. It would be a great help to have. Uh, that's the number one excuse I hear for people that quit this game is this. Well, I guess the number two. The number one is they got burnt out on the grind. Number two, it would be they don't understand the game. There's They don't understand what they're supposed to do. They get a ship. They fly around. Oh, where's the story? What am I supposed to do? And this kind of thing would cure that. Right on. I, Yeah, there, I would love to see, okay, there's this other mode, the solo mode, offline mode, whatever, that is the story mode game. That does have, you know, every year or two has another boom. These these new 18 missions came out and it has this story stuff or that, whatever. Wolf, what do you think? 
my my thought goes back to me recalling a little over a year ago uh, when I first started playing the game. Um, I, I I like to jokingly say that that elite doesn't have a learning curve. It's it's a learning vertical asymptote. Like you get it, getting through that first. I'm going to say a couple hundred hours of just learning how to play the game is painful. And I've got some friends of mine that I tried to get into the game. Uh, they started, they didn't want help. He was like, no, it's, it's a game. I can do this. And, and, and they, they dropped it. This would be an excellent way of properly introducing how to do all the stuff in the game over and beyond what the current tutorials do, which some of them, you know, parts of them are okay. Other parts are just completely out to lunch. Um, especially with all the new players that we've had joined through the, the, the free Epic uh, uh, quote unquote sales. And when Odyssey comes in, we're going to pick up new players there. I hope, I really hope beyond hope that when F dev drops Odyssey, on us in its full form and everybody flocks to it like they think that they're going to have with their sales numbers that there is a tutorial at least for odyssey specifically that teaches these new players how to play the game like you're going to get the people who be like oh it's an fps i know how to play an fps yeah no not like this f dev's going to do stuff that is going to make things grindy and difficult and there's some of the things that you have to do their way in order to make it happen so basically you're you're what you're saying there is this game is way harder than what you think it's going to be when you're starting as a game player it's also may, way more deep and rewarding and challenging and like long term whatever but by by teaching people through a story mode version of it you can sort of set their expectations properly so they know, hey, man, this isn't a game you're going to get to the end in, 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 in you know, eight hours or 10 hours of play. This is going to be thousands of hours of your life. Settle in and enjoy the ride. Exactly. Um, I mean, I to be perfectly honest, if I didn't have a helpful commander come in and, you know, you know, put me under their wing and, and teach me stuff um, that I needed to know, um, you know, I've been out. I've been out of the 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 newbie zone for a while and just mm. still didn't know how to play the game. It was getting very frustrated. It, the fact that somebody else had to come in and show me basic things for my understanding so that I wasn't so frustrated that I wanted to quit the game. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here. If it, if it wasn't for them, I would not be here. I get it, brother. I get it. I also went out and dragged in my good buddy Astro, Down to Earth Astronomy, who's here in the chat with us now. He knows the deal. He knows what we're talking about. Uh, basically, the pitch is uh, a elite version of Squadron 42 that does an extended tutorial and has a story mode and can help sort of players help grow the game and have people stick. Astro, your thoughts? Um, I think you have as somebody mentioned like the learning curve in uh, in elite it can really be a <laughs> it can be a vertical wall sometime uh, mm -hmm. where you just feel like <sighs> that if you want to if you're starting out in elite it can be super frustrating that you feel like every time you're taking one tiny step you are going to find a uh, guide online you're gonna go and search reddit you're gonna go and search youtube you're gonna go and look up guides that uh, it's just i it's such a frustrating process early in the game where you just want to play but you end up like clicking two buttons and then watching 10 minutes videos and then clicking mm. two buttons again so um i think for already did a lot of work to get new players in and um, mm -hmm. i haven't seen any numbers actually for the retention rate of all the new people who have been joining through either Epic or the uh, the Game Pass thing that happened. Um, that could be interesting to see, and I don't think Frontier is going to publish it, but it would actually be interesting to see if that changed. Um, did people stick around longer, or was it just the same? Um, hmm. uh, and so, what do you, how, how, hmm. How hard do you think it would be to to implement this? Basically, my idea was, uh, um, Astro, that 
Frontier would literally just take the existing assets, take the existing flight model, the existing ships, the existing missions, mm. gut a little bit of the process to where it's like you're not engineering your own ship, or at least not till towards the end in the in the beginning, the first 20 or 30 missions. They literally just assign you a ship. It's already outfitted. And then they you're like, okay, here's your your first out of rookie assignment, or you're you're in the academy as the first five or ten missions. And it's like, here's how you land, here's how you take off, here's how you you know, mine a rock, here's how you this, here's how you that. But I mean, just using all of the existing sort of missions, then putting a couple of developers with a couple of artists to do like voiceover work and add a like an actual sort of detailed storyline and just sort of throw it out there as a very, a, a, a next to free, like a $5, whatever game of, hey, this is going to be 300 hours, 400 hours. And it has this in-depth total, because I mean, you're just using almost all of the assets they already have. I think with with Odyssey, when we begin to get like more on foot, I think having a, a actual story campaign would make a little bit more sense to me. Um, I wanted to say that it probably wouldn't take a ton of work, but mm. then I'm looking at Squadron 42 and I'm thinking... Maybe that's just me who has absolutely no idea how game development work, because to be honest, I don't. Um, but I would guess that since they have a lot of the the assets already, they have the ships, they have the suits, the weapons, all that's like the framework is there, that just basically writing missions would work. But I'm not sure I would go and make it a... Um, make it a separate... Uh, make it a separate game completely. As uh, as uh, they've done with Star Citizen, I think it would work better to have it like an epic arc or something in in Elite itself, mm. where like maybe each faction would have like this story arc you could uh, you could follow, and there would be some special missions that would I don't know give you some some power play uh, weapons. You could get uh, a few of those early on without having to do the uh, the four weeks. Maybe give you some some extra bonuses to your to your uh, mm -hmm. uh, to your to your rank that kind of thing. So, but where there is a longer mission where you like interact with the same NPCs, you kind of follow a story arc, and in that progress or in that process of following that story, you, without you noticing, you're actually circumventing a lot of that what would people would consider grind, being mm -hmm. unlock a rank or go get these power play modules, that kind of thing. Mm. I would point um, out. I would point out that when you say like, oh, you would think that Squadron 42 is easy, but look at how much trouble they're having with it. Well, you have to keep in mind, in that case, though, you're talking about doing the story mode version for an unfinished game. Because like if they try to do the salvage true, mechanics true. or medical or all this different stuff, it doesn't exist in Star Citizen. So they can't yeah. just transpose it onto Squadron 42, whereas opposed to Elite, Elite is a fully finished game. Where it's like yeah. if you do a scan mission or this or that, it it exists. The code is already there. It doesn't have to be developed and rewritten. It you can just cut and paste. And I I know I'm an asshole. I'm a I'm a I'm a jarhead who doesn't fucking really understand how any of this programming shit works. So for me to say oh it's easy, I know I'm an asshole. But like, still, come on, it's done. It's already in the game. Take the existing missions, put some cool little story with it. And the reason why I was saying to make it a separate separate game, Astro, was that like you could put it out on Steam for like three dollars permanently. It's just a mm. whatever, because the point of it isn't to make money off of the game. The point of it is that when you get to mission 20 and finish it, it tells you here's a coupon code to get regular elite for ten dollars as opposed to the you know normal forty dollars or whatever. And People will feel like, oh, you know, and also we're going to give you not only your first starter ship, but because you're a veteran of these 20 missions or 30 missions or whatever, we're going to give you this other thing, like some something, I mean, you know, here's some paint jobs, here's some whatever, make you, oh, you get the exclusive special deal. And then you spend the $20 on that. You play the full elite with, with knowing all the stuff so that you stick. You're not you're not going to hit the wall and bounce off. You're going to be like you're going to retain because you know the stuff. 
and you play it for a month or two and then you go you know what ah oh, fuck i need to be able to get out of my ship i'm uh, 39.95 for odyssey for odyssey yeah that's, i'm in let's do it let's make a ruck i can i can see the idea of having like a cheap uh, almost like a demo that yeah. that works as uh, um as a, like a gateway drug basically into uh, yes. into elite um what i would be afraid of in a situation like that uh, I mean, you need to you need to have the expectation management when people make the switch from um, Squadron Forty Three or whatever you're gonna call it <laughs> to uh, to to really dangerous because it is it would be very very different. Like you 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 go from something where it it might be very, very railroady. It's like a story thing. Mm-hmm. And 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 then you also all of a sudden you're just dropped into the sandbox, which is a, a mm. completely different type of game. So you need to make sure that people know exactly what they're buying into when they make the switch from uh, from one to the other. Otherwise, you're just gonna have people who's like, what what what? Where where's all the missions? Where are all the stories? Where are all like, it's just space. <laughs> so the cool thing is you can take, and I, I just named it Elite. Dark Star. I just I just made that name up, but right, right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you could take those people, right? And one of, some of the like the last ten missions you give them could all be story hook missions. You send them on a mission to a Thargoid area, you s- to see the map. You send them on a mission to the Guardian area. You send them on a mission to an Inra base. You send them on a mission to help out fucking. Go to Kubio, and you got to help out the people's blue-haired princess. You send them on a mission to help repair a base for Operation Ida, so that they have story hooks where then later on they can go. Oh, I know how to do this. I know how to filter on my map and look for a burning station and and repair it. Or I know how to look for guardian sites. Or I know how to whatever tweak. Yeah, I was. I was going to say another thing to do for these guys. And yeah, I agree. Astro, totally. You'd have to set expectations because they're going to be handheld through story. And if they just come into elite expecting that they're going to be very disappointed. But to, to, if I would have had a, something like that, when I started this game, all these, you know, 3,500 hours ago or so, and then I made some money and I made some, fed rank or some imperial rank and i got some guardian stuff from a tutorial mission type thing like this and then carried my progress over to elite dangerous oh my god that would have been so great so useful Hmm. beautiful but my thought was that you yeah you could do it as a, a standalone game um or you could make it integrated in um you could make it so that after you do the current noob zone area, there's there's like a, a mega ship that you get on. You're like, I want to go here, and then it, it like jumps you to say one of the permit lock sectors that, that none of us can get to, or just a, a big enough permit lock system to make it, it useful. Where once you've got that, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave. Like you're you're in that mode, quote unquote. Um they could mix in storyline, they could put in whole bunch of uh, native factions you can get the regular missions so you can kind of go off and do your own thing but there's still this overarching storyline and that would be a pretty good temper for when you're done with this and you're in the sandbox this the story from here is what you make so you'll be able to see all these things but I i think the most important thing that you could do inside of this mission progression for learning is have the system tell you it's like you need to go here you need to outfit your sh- your ship to do this kind of a task and teach you how to do the outfitting teach you what the different modules do uh, that's a tremendously just wait i gotta make my ship do different things by building it differently that un- until you've done it a couple times it it's a daunting task um k case in point kai i know you've you've got stories and i've got stories with uh various other players and whatnot just going up mining to get money so they can buy better ships and Oh, I need a refinery. Great. I don't have a refinery. I didn't know that. It, it, yeah. the, this needs to build and teach you all the different things about the game. Not not go like deep down in it. Like, you know, it would be awkward 
for it to be like, and here's how you do BGS. We want you to expand this faction from here to wherever, which in a lock system, you're the only one in it. Yeah, you can make that happen. But that's probably beyond scope. One one thing that we're missing here, though, I think, honestly, and, and I don't know that, I don't, Astro, I don't know that you're going to say this, but we're kind of crouching into your audience there, right? It, when I first started playing this game 3,000 hours ago, I sat around the backyard pool while my daughter was swimming, watching videos from Down to <laughs> Earth and Commander Exegius and trying to learn everything I could about this game. And what we're talking about is an in-game way to do that now. So Through the mission system, they could specifically, on just stuff that they control... They could send you, like I said, on a mission to the Guardians, on a mission to this location where they have the Project Thunderchild story, on a mission to this location with Inra, on a mission to Jameson's crash site, on a mission to just on stuff that they 100% internally control within the in-universe game that is exactly 100% under their control. They could put enough hooks in there that explain stuff. and then. They could say, just on one thing, say, hey, here is the Galactic Academy Discord. Go check this out. And Galactic Academy could maintain, here is Astro, here is Exegius, here is Commander's Toolbox, here is uh, Lave Radio, mm -hmm. here is this, that, and the other. No, I'm just thinking, so what they what you could potentially do, what I'm absolutely sure they could get people to do was, you know, just like when you bought games back in like the... Uh like everything before like mid 2000s you would always always get this like thick booklet with this is the ui this is the yep. command yep. yeah yeah you all know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. make that but just in a digital version for elite and mm -hmm. outsource the creation of it to the community so basically mm -hmm. say hey if you want to write a part hey, we need we have these these chapters we want to write if you want to write them go do it send it to us then they will review it they will uh, make whatever edits they feel like they need but the bulk of the work outsource it i would Beautiful. i mean english is not my first language but i'll be happy to write it for to write a chapter or two and then have somebody proofread it later 